Well, good morning, Holy Cross. Good to see y'all here today. It's good to be in God's house. Good to be here for worship and uh, glad to have you with us. Not too much to announce for you. Uh, We do have um, Confirmation Sunday coming up in just a couple of weeks. And so uh, excited for that and excited for the kids and, and everything that goes along with that as they confirm the faith into which they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And so... Uh, we're excited for that. Uh, before we get going, we do have one quick announcement. So, uh, Mr. Priyu, I would invite you to step up there and uh, share with us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the uh, River Fest uh, Faith and Family Night is coming up Wednesday, uh, April 28th, which um, my company is buying a kind of a group package. So, I'm going to have 25 tickets uh, available. For anybody that wants them, if the youth wants to go or anybody else, uh, they're, they're free. So it's Wednesday the 28th. Uh, I'm not sure who the, uh, the talent is, but they usually get pretty good artists there. So just get with me after church or, or uh, let me know. Okay. I'll come after confirmation. I'll talk to you about it. Very good. Well, we have come here for worship uh, today, so let's go ahead and stand, uh, greet each other in whatever way you feel the most comfortable, and then we'll sing. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up. And have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. Gracious Lord, by your name, you have called us your own children and we are to pray, praise, and give thanks to you. Yet we often choose not to see the love you have given to us, letting other things of this world impede our vision of your mercy and grace in Christ. 
we do not always live as you have called us to be as your children. We confess our sins to God in repentance, turning from those things that lead us away, turning back to you in the love you've shown. Almighty and ever compassionate Lord, we are by nature sinful and unclean. We confess our many failures as we have not followed you joyfully and trustingly. We have not loved others as you first have loved us. And our thoughts, words, and deeds have not been pleasing to you. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us to delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints. And give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As his children, may he keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit and grant you a renewed life on earth and finally, a triumphant life with him in heaven forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. O Lord, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescue from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And please be seated for the reading of Scripture. first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 4. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of these things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was, distribu it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. The first John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should, should be called the children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be is not yet appeared. But what we know, and when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning is also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appears to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. 
No one who keeps on sinning is either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. And please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see, that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. I would invite the children forward for the children's sermon. You guys come on down. All right, good. Come and sit. You can sit here. You can sit on the floor. Either way. Good. I'm so glad that y'all are here this morning. Good to have you here. Uh, And so we're not going to do everybody, but I'll ask a couple of you. uh, Who can tell me what is your name? Landon. Landon. Yeah. What's your name? Grace. Grace. What's your name, sweetheart? Kinsley. Yeah. What's your name? Victoria. And we could do everybody's name. It'd be a lot of names. Uh, well, I tell you what. Do you want to tell me your name? Ethan. Okay, Ethan. Very good. All right. Uh, so as you tell me your name, uh, well, let me ask you one more question with that. Uh, why do you have the name that you, who gave you your name? I'll ask it that way. Who gave you your name? Jesus, Jesus God. More acutely, perhaps. Your parents. Yeah, probably your parents, okay? Yeah. yeah, with maybe a little influence from your mom's mom, we might say. Okay. I want to read you a Bible verse. It, we heard it a minute ago. Uh, here's what it says in 1 John chapter 3. And now, little children, abide in him. So that, excuse me, uh, verse, chapter 3, verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. So here's what the Bible tells us, okay? Everybody has a name, and they're all a little bit different, and that's good. When we become a Christian, that means when we are baptized, when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we have a name, and then we all become brothers and sisters in Christ. See? Uh, So, y'all... You have a family, you maybe have brothers and sisters, you got mom and dad, that's your family, and that's awesome, and that's amazing. Here's the thing, though, you've got an even bigger family than that, and that is that you are a Christian, and you belong to that bigger family, and that means all of us, every person in this room, and this might blow your mind, but people all around the world who love Jesus... We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. So it's not just that you have your name from your parents, but God has given you 
a new name that says that you belong to him and that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Isn't that awesome? Isn't it cool that we're all brothers and sisters in Christ? I think that's cool and that that's amazing. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank you, thank you. For, our names. for our names. Thank you for our new name, thank you for our new name. that makes us Brothers and, sisters in Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. It's kind of becoming a thing, guys. It is. Y'all can go back to your families and we will sing. and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. 
Amen. Christ is risen. We are still in the Easter season. We're still allowed to do that one. It's one of our favorites, I think. You know, in our day and time, there are many. I hope that wasn't me. There are many ways of thinking, there are many uh, thought processes, there are uh, many ideologies that uh, the way that you know them, the way that you get involved in them uh, is that there is a uh, series of uh, postulates, beliefs, ideas that you pick up along the way, right? You pick them up. The Bible, though, is different. The Bible is different than that. The Bible is not something that you pick up. It is something that picks you up. Can you pop me down just a little bit? Thanks. Uh, and so uh, what happens is, is that as you read the Bible and as you get to know uh, the God of the Bible, he comes and he grabs you. And we see it here as Jesus interacts with the disciples after his resurrection. We see and we know that Jesus is not a passive savior. Jesus, yes, is a redeemer, but he is not just a redeemer. He opens the minds of his disciples as we go through all of it. Jesus says, I come to you, I show you the Father. And so he does. And he shows us who he is. So, the God of the Bible and the faith of the Bible, the Christian faith, it's something that comes and it gets you. And I would submit to you that Jesus comes and he gets you. It is part of Jesus' prophetic ministry going forward. And so as we look at it, we will look at the what and the why and the how. So, uh, let's start with the what of it and in the midst of that he gives us eyes to see and there's an earthly and there is a heavenly part of his prof prophetic ministry excuse me and so it's here he teaches them right he proclaims to them he teaches them truths and they're truths that open eyes let's look at Luke chapter 24 I read it a moment ago, but let's look at verse 44. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And this is this whole interaction between Jesus and the disciples that we've talked about the past uh, number of weeks. It's just all this time, three over the course of three years, he told them and he told them and he told them and they just didn't quite understand it and now he's going to tell them again which any of, if I got any teachers out there this is what you do right you tell them and you tell them and you tell them again Amen. and this is what Jesus does he's already taught them these things what do we read then he says he opened their minds to understand the scriptures it, it, it's like, so they have eyes, and their eyes work, but there was no light, and so they couldn't see anything. That, that, that's kind of the idea. And so he opens up their minds, and now they can see. So, you might see this, the example is maybe there's a parent and uh, just, just can't control Children, teenage children if it is, they're petulant, they're rebellious. And so you go to a counselor and you talk to them and they say, well, you know, it, 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 it's, it's your fault. It, you, you need to do better, you need to be better, you need to have all these things going on. But then the question becomes, will, will they listen? It's kind of like that with the disciples. Will they listen? Will they have eyes to see? Will they have ears to hear? Will they know? Will they understand? There needs to be light for the eyes. 
this is our problem, right? We need not just a counselor, we need a wonderful counselor. We need the wonderful counselor that Isaiah talks about. And it's Jesus. And so Jesus opened up their eyes and he opened up their minds so that they could understand what he told them. This is the only faith that actually works. Right? The Christian faith is the only faith that actually works. Because you can have a faith that says, well, here are the laws. Well, that's an external word only, right? Or you can have a faith that says, well, go inside of yourself and, 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 and do what's inside of yourself. Well, that's an internal faith only. But no, see, you need, you need a prophet and a redeemer. See, you need one who was both God and man. And that's exactly who Jesus is. And that's what it looks like. So if that's the what of it, then what is the why of it? Why is it that we need Jesus? Well, we need Jesus because we are, excuse me, we need Jesus because we are spiritually blind. That is our problem. And as we read it here, it says that he opened up, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And the nuance of the word here is not just he opened, but he broke open. Like there were issues, there were, pro- there were things blocking the input, and Jesus crashed through all of that. He, he broke through. Has he broke through you? Has he broke through the obstacles, the things that are there that are blocking his relationship with you to come in? See, because it means not just to open a door. It means to blast through a mountain. And we try it every day and all the time. We, 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 we build structures and obstacles and things that separate us from God. And the good news and the promise here is that Jesus breaks through all of that. See, sin causes it to be blocked. And Jesus comes through. You need someone to fix it. You need someone else to come in and to solve that which you cannot solve. See, spiritual blindness is not a lack of of reason. And you may have encountered this. You, you may have had deep discussions with somebody who doesn't know Jesus. Uh, if I may, you may have had discussions with somebody smarter than you who doesn't know Jesus. And they talk to you about it, right? It's a thing that happen. It's a thing that happens. It's not inability to see the truth. It's inability to value and appreciate the truth and that which Jesus brings. Right? And it goes forward from there. So, we've got the what, we've got the why. What about the how of it? How how does this all happen? Well, the way it's described here is that we stand under the truth. We, we understand. We assemble the puzzle that's there. If you're going to assemble a puzzle, what do you do? You lay it out, and then you put it together, right? You see the connections, and you see how they fit together, and you, you put it all together. And don't be the person who takes one piece and puts it in your pocket so that you can put in the last piece. You know who you are. No, see, but what, what, what happens with all of that? The connections make you see it as a whole. And then when the picture is assembled, you know what you have. And once you see it, you can't not see it. So, it's the difference. Okay, I'll, do, I'll say it this way. It's the difference between saying, Jesus died for sin. 
completely true. Then on the other hand, you say, Jesus died for my sins. Do you see the difference? On the one hand, you've made a statement that is detached from your life and from your experience. And on the other hand, when you say Jesus died for my sin, you're admitting, acknowledging that Jesus came into my life and changed it. See? That's what it looks like. See, Jesus comes and says, no, I I must serve you. I must die for you. What does that look like? Here's what we get in our Christian walk. We get newness. We learn new things. We understand new things. We make new relationships. And you may have had this happen to you in this setting, in another place, or but you hear a song, you hear a hymn, you hear a scripture verse, and just all of a sudden, it just hits you in a different way. Have you ever had that happen to you? See, newness when you know Jesus. As well, we get connection. We get connection. It says that at the end of the passage, right, they departed. Why? Because they had encountered Jesus, they had heard from Jesus, and they obeyed Jesus. And that's what he calls them to do. He calls them to go and he calls them to do. And so they follow that teaching. Here's what it says in verse 49. Behold, Jesus says, Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. That'll be the day of Pentecost. But here's what we learn. They return with joy because now they're doing what they're called to do. See, now they're doing what Jesus has told them to do. They're going to wait, and then they're going to go. And and they've gotten this opportunity to connect their actions with Jesus' word. And, And now we know. And now we go. Now we do what he has called us to do. See, Jesus engages the whole person. And, and so it's the heart and it's the body, right? It, it's, the, it's the motive and the action. And Jesus calls them into all of this. And he's always unfolding it. And he's doing it for all of us. Let me read verse 41 here. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, He said to them, have you anything to eat? This is quite a a verse. So, look what's going on. They disbelieved for joy, which what does that mean? I think it means that in the moment, in the experience in which they're, you know, having all of this happen... They know they're with Jesus. They know Jesus loves them. They know they love Jesus. And it's just so overwhelming for them. So they disbelieved for joy. And they were marveling. Same, that's in the same category. And then Jesus says, do you have anything to eat? And they say, well, we're, we got some fish on the grill. That's what we got for you. And Jesus says, barbecue. I'm in. <laughs> and we get that note there, and it, it demonstrates the bodily resurrection, certainly, and so, so it's there. But you know, just this verse and a half that's, that's right here, it, it, it shows us the, this very human response and reaction that the disciples have to the resurrected Lord. And for all of the disciples' shortcomings over the past number of years, and we've talked about in the past few weeks, like I said, man, they're just glad to be with Jesus. And I think we can all relate to that as well. 
Jesus gives us eyes to see because we're blind. And that connects it to the rest of our lives. And then Jesus gives them the power to go forward. The same Jesus who raised Lazarus from the dead can raise your soul. That's what I'm here to tell you today. And it, it, it's this thing that doesn't quite make sense, right? Like the moment that you admit that you can't see, that's when you begin to see, right? The moment that you admit, I, I, I don't understand how Jesus can love you, that's when you know that Jesus loves you, see? That's the beauty of the gospel. That's how the gospel overcomes every shortcoming of our own faith in ourselves. No. He saves you and he continues to save you. So rejoice in him. Rejoice in the light that he brings. Rejoice in the sight that he gives. Rejoice that you have not just a counselor, but you have a wonderful counselor. Rejoice that in the midst of your, while you are disbelieving from joy and marveling, that he is with you, that he is real, that he gives you sight, that he brings you light. See, all of these things, Jesus is with you. Just as Jesus was with the disciples on that beach that morning, he's with you today. In Jesus' good name, amen. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine can only imagine Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing a hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? I stand in your presence 
To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll continue with the creed and the prayers of the church and then get into our communion liturgy. So I would invite you to stand. <clears throat> and we confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and Lord, in your love, you have called us as your own, gathered us together, and enlightened us by your Holy Spirit through your word. We bring you our prayer and praise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for all people of the world that the Easter joy that shines by the radiance of your Son, our risen Savior Jesus Christ, would arise in the hearts and minds of all people. Grant all your people the needs of body and life by the daily bread you provide and keep all from harm. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all care, give comfort to those who face troubles in this life in their spiritual, emotional, and mental need. Give healing according to your will for those who face physical trials. Uh, we place them, Lord, uh, those known to us in our hearts. Uh, Lord, we bring before you silently at, at this time. Grant peace to all who mourn that Christ's Easter victory would point beyond earthly death and the grave to the promises assured forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of all provision, look with favor upon our land and all in authority that they lead with wisdom and compassion for all. Be with those who serve and defend from harm and those who work to keep communities safe and in order. Bless all vocations that all would see their work for others as joyful service to you and your creation. Grant your spirit that our eyes always be open to see your love for us in Christ through your word and the means of grace. That as we live as your children, we love as you have first loved us and confidently witness and proclaim the Easter joy within us to all. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear us as we pray together, Lord, the prayer that you've given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sin of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy. Jesus Christ, the night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, this cup is the New Testament, in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Now may the partaking of this holy meal strengthen and preserve you steadfast in true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. And let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.